Hello everyone. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live with Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator Teresa Harper. I am live coming to you in Sheridan, Oregon in the U.S. Be sure to comment, share, and like the video. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay. Hope everybody had a good week. Mine has been incredibly busy. And I've had the littles most every day for at least a portion. So, anyway, we had some pretty hot days and then today's been cool. So that's been kind of nice. Hope you've had nice weather where you're at that's not too hot. Hello, Laura. How are you? Welcome. We're going to be using, hello, Cynthia. Hello, hello. How are you surviving the heat? Hello, Jennifer. Thank you for joining me. Appreciate all of you. All right, tonight we're going to be using the Elephant Parade bundle of products, and that comes with a a set of 13 uh, cling rubber stamps. Most of mine are out. And um, it also has the elephant dies. And the dies, there are 16 of those in the dies. And they are really cute. Love these little peanuts. These cut out your stamp peanuts, butterflies, flower. You've got a couple of bows some grass pieces, and then these are all cut out, the stamps. All right, so you can purchase those separately or in a bundle and save 10%. All right, you'll find this on page 48 of the 2022-23 Stampin' Up! Annual Catalog. All right, let's set this aside. Thank you for sharing, Jennifer. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with our first card. This card happens to be the layout was a sketch challenge that I participated in. So not only are we using the elephant parade, but we're also going to use wildlife wonder because I needed a shadow piece and so we're going to pull this one in from wildlife wonder this is also in the annual catalog okay um our card base is actually from the t boutique cards and envelopes so you will find those in the annual catalog you get 20 cards and 20 envelopes and they all come and the 2022 20, to 24 in colors, you get four of each design in that packet. But we're going to be using this tonight because it fit my project well. And then you'll need a piece of two pieces of garden green, and those. Uh, are cut at this one's cut at two inch uh, one and three quarters by four and I've embossed it with the twigs and sprigs embossing folder now this has a matching die um, and so you can emboss your leaves and then with the die it will cut out the majority of those leaves so I've done that and then I went ahead and inked some of these up in garden green just so that you could see just how beautifully 
those emboss. Okay, you cannot buy the embossing folder and the die separately. They come together as a set and they're a standalone item in the back of the catalog. Okay, so that's that. And then we also need a piece of garden green that is cut at two by three and a half. And we've got a piece of basic white that's cut at two and a quarter by three and three quarters because we're going to layer these two pieces on top of each other. So we can go ahead and get started layering up some of these pieces. But before we do that, we're going to stamp on this piece of garden green and we're going to get some garden green ink. And that must be in my other bucket. Oh. Oh, yes, it is in my other bucket. Okay. So I'm take the garden green ink and we're going to take that stamp from the Wildlife Wonder, which I thought I had out already. I do have it out. Where did I stick that stamp? Well, that's just the weirdest thing. So it's definitely not in its place, and I was sure I had it on a block. I must just be overlooking it. I am. Um, whew! That freaked me out a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to take that stamp. I'm gonna ink it up. Oh, not like that. Oh, that was a little bit of a disaster. All right, so, okay, I think I can make this work. So let's just stamp that off. And then we're going to stamp on our piece of garden green cardstock very near the bottom. And we're just gonna give that a good ink. Okay, now I'm going to clean that off right away because if I don't, I will have a total mess later. So I got it on the block. And we don't like that. So I'm just going to clean it on my Simply Chamois. That works for a quick clean. I actually like to take my clean stamps later and use my Stamp and scrub with my stamp and mist and really clean those red rubber stamps. Okay, so this is ready to be married to its basic white piece. And we're just going to center that up as best we can. Okay, and then we're going to take our embossed piece and we're going to put it over here on the side. And I'm going to use liquid glue for that because this is a 3D embossing folder and that impression is pretty deep. So I want this to stick. So I'm just going to put that down and try to leave an even border on three sides, the top, the bottom, and the left. Okay. And now we're ready to go ahead and place this down. And then we will start stamping and putting together our decorations. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, oh, you know what I did with this before? Let me do that. I didn't like th this 
Let me grab my glue dots, but they're not where they belong. Where did they run off to? I'm going to need those. Hmm, don't see them. They should be right on top of my case. They're not where they belong. I thought I had this all together. Why are my glue dots not where they belong? Well, who? Gonna have to find some more glue dots. So I don't know what happened to my box. All right, so I've got that. Now let's go ahead and do a little stamping. Actually, I'm gonna fold this now before I get too many layers on it because I should have done that to start with. It's a little bit easier when you don't have a bunch of layers. Let's take that. These are already pre-scored for you, so all you have to do is fold them over and give them a little burnish. And then they're ready to go. Okay, so let's get some scrap white paper. And we're going to take our Memento Tuxedo Black. And we're going to stamp this little elephant from the stamp set on this piece of basic white with the memento. And then we're going to stamp our little mouse. And then I need four of these beautiful leaves. So there we go. And then all we need to do is color these up. So I'm not going to make you watch me color them all because I did stamp and die cut in advance, but I will show you how I did some of it in case you wish to re recreate. I started with my leaves and I'm going to start with a light granny apple green and I'm just going to go along the edge of my leaves here and then I'm just going to go beside the veining that the artist put in on the leaves and I don't want to necessarily go right on because when I blend I don't want to be right on that line. Then I'm going to take my dark parakeet party. I'm going to go back over and widen that granny apple green a bit. Okay. And that's going to give my leaf a little dimension. Then I'm going to go with my light parakeet party and I'm going to blend those colors together and I'm trying to stay off of the black lines as much as possible so that that black ink doesn't bleed. Okay. And then I would color my other three leaves just like this one. For my elephant, I'm going to start with light petal pink. I'm going to put a little bit of color on her cheeks. And then I'm going to color in the inside of the ear. And I'm going to color her little toenails right there. And then I'm going to take my dark smoky slate 
And I'm going to go along the top here and put that in where there's just a little bit of hair. And again, on the artist's lines, in the trunk, at the curve of the leg bellies. And I just want to widen that up so it looks like there would be a shadow. And I'm going to come along the trunk line and the ear line with that dark. And then I'm gonna take my light smoky slate and I'm gonna go back over the dark and then bring it out. And blend those all together. Okay. And as you can tell, this little image really doesn't take that long to color. Oh, and I should have put a little bit of dark right here along the trunk line. Right in here. The mouth, where that's going to come together. Because that trunk is going to shade or put a shadow on the face. And then we're just going to finish this off. I like to go around the whole outside, go around the eyes to ensure I don't mess those up. And then go back and fill it all in. And then I'm just going to color the ears. And my little elephant is all done. Okay. For the mouse, again... I'm going to do the centers and I'm going to put a little bit of color on the cheek at where the whiskers meet the face. And for this one, I'm going to take light gray granite. I'm just going to color that in. Make sure I get that tail and that arm over there. Okay. And then I'm going to very, very lightly color in the belly. Barely touching the paper. And I'm going to go back with my color lifter. And I'm going to run that over the belly area and lighten that up a shade. Just to give it a little bit of texture, a little bit of difference. Okay, and there are the images that I need for my card. Okay, so we can put all of those blends away. And then we can run this through the mini, the mini machine. We don't have to have the big machine, so all of these can be cut that way and with this machine I can easily cut three of these at one time now I can only cut three of them because I only have one leaf so I would need this one and this one and I got those just maybe a little too close put a little bit of washi tape down or post-it tape to hold those pieces in place so they don't shift on me And then I'll grab my little mouse here. <clears throat> and this has a little hole in the die for the mouse's tail. So if you can see the mouse's tail through that die, then you know you've got it. Okay, and here 
I don't know what I did there, but I didn't do it right, and it lifted up on me. So let's go ahead and cut those in. I think I forgot to color that elephant's tail there. No worries, we can go back and fix that in a minute. Okay, so we've got that. We gotta switch my plates because I put that on my Gosh darn it. My tape is apparently well loved and not holding quite as tight. Either that or I just didn't push it down hard enough. Okay. So we've got those all on. We'll run all those pieces through. And then I would repeat that process for the rest of the leaves, okay? And there's our little mouse. And we've got a leaf. And we've got our little elephant. Okay. Now let's go back and because I forgot color that tail. We can't have that tail hanging out there non-colored. So let's grab that light smoky slate and just give that tail a quick little color. All right. Now we've got our pieces that we need. go ahead and move some things out of the way and start assembling our project. So I've got a couple more leaves here that I did ahead of time. And we need a piece of basic white and basically this strip is a half of an inch and I just had a scrap and I took the end of it, and with the banner pick-a-punch, I just slid that into the banner end. I like to flip it over to make sure that I am got it in the track right. And then I just snipped off that end, okay? And I only want the one end. So we're going to go ahead and stamp our sentiment on the other end. And our sentiment also comes from Elephant Parade. So we're gonna take the Memento Tuxedo Black again, and we're gonna ink that up with the What a Happy Day. And I'm gonna bring this down a little closer so I can see it better. And I'm gonna line that up and stamp it down. Okay, just like that. Now we've got all the pieces that we need for our card. So we're gonna start by putting on our leaves, which hang on just a minute, I've got to get blue dots. I'm not sure why that, of course that box will surface right after I get done with my, my live. So we're going to take some glue dots and we're going to actually with this one, no, this one I did just glue. So for this one, I, I put my glue mostly at the bottom of the leaves. Because they're going to be kind of um, on two levels of paper. So I wanted to make sure that the paint, the level that they're going to spend most of their time on here is going to be the top layer and I want that to be a nice solid adhesion. So I'm going to use some liquid glue at the bottom to really seal that in and I'm going all the way to the edge and then I'm going to did the right and the left, and then I'll kind of angle these in. 
like so. I'm not giving them a super hard press. I can still pick them up if I need to. And that's going to be a bit. Let me spread that out. If you get too much glue like I just did, don't squeeze your bottle. Just take your tip and move that glue around. And then we'll put this in like this. Okay. So now we have our leaves. And at this point, I want to make sure that I've got a little bit of sparkle on my card because if you have followed me for any length of time, you know I like a little bit of sparkle. So I'm gonna put a little bit of sparkle on my leaves so it kind of looks like they have dew. Okay, now we're going to add our elephant with some mini glue dot or with some glue dots. Now I've got the end pieces here that I need to get used up. So I'm just going to, I've already pre-cut them into smaller pieces. And I'm just going to use those because they're just as good as the factory cut pieces. And I don't want to waste them. Okay, so then we'll take our little elephant and we're going to stick her right here so that she's standing on her little shadow. And then we're going to... Oh, what happened? Oops. Facebook freaked out, you guys. And it took away my video. Hang on, I can't see any comments. That is the weirdest thing. Um, what did it do? Took away my video. Sorry. I can't see any comments at the moment. And it's not letting me. Oh, come on, Facebook. Okay, post videos. It's, is it going to show me the. This is bizarre. I cannot find the video. So I cannot see your comments. And where is this? There. There we go. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, Lynette, your cable is out. Oh. Well, I'm hoping that mine stays going. Hello, by the way. All right. So we're going to take and um, stick this out here. I'm going to trim this up a bit. I'm going to decide how long I want this. I think we're going to snip that about there. Stick that up there. And then we'll stick our mouse right here. Oh, I might turn this a little shorter. And then put our mouse about, okay, that'll work. Let's go ahead and we're just gonna put this down with liquid glue. And I'm not going all the way to the end because my end is going to stick off. Put 
this up here like so and then we'll pop up our little mouse with some minis Now, if you don't have the mini dimensionals, you can always cut the larger ones down, but the mini ones sure make it a lot easier. Okay, and we're gonna put this right here. All right, so there is the front of our card all finished up. Okay, for the inside now, we're going to take a piece of white. Now you don't have to do this because you could just take a piece of the T Boutique Designer Series paper that matches these cards and um, take a half inch strip and put it along the bottom here. But I like to use a three and five eighths by four and seven eighths piece of basic white and that's what I've done here and I've left this sentiment free because oh what a happy day oh what a happy day could be for so many different things and I don't know for sure what I'm going to use this card for yet so I left the inside blank it can be just a note card I can add a happy birthday or uh, you know it's just a happy day today. I could do whatever. All right, so that is our first project. And of course, those cards and envelopes, I don't even have to do anything with the card because it's already done for me. So on both the flap and the back is all ready decorated, coordinates, and I'm good to go. All right. Guess I didn't need those glue dots yet. All right, so let's go ahead and clean up these stamps because we're gonna need them again. We'll just clean those up really quickly and move on to the next card. Now, the next card, I'm going to be honest with you. This was a card that I saw, and I took the sketch, and I did the sketch up, and then I decided after I got it done that I wanted to change it a little bit. So we are going to, on the fly, finish changing up my card. Okay, so this card will have a sneak peek of a new upcoming celebration product. So we are going to start with a basic white card. Oh, not basic white, basic white thick card base. And this is five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a quarter. Now, if you don't want, I'll show you the finished, um, I'll show you the original card when we get done, and you can do it however you like, okay? So then I've taken a piece of Rich Razzleberry card stock, and this is four, four inches by five and a quarter, and again, I ran it through the twigs and sprigs embossing folder, okay? So I did that to give it a little texture. Um, I've got a piece of regular basic white, and this is three and one eighth inches by eight and a half inches, and I've scored it at four and a quarter. Okay. Then I've taken a piece of the new designer series paper. This is a celebration item and it is called Wonderful World. And this is the piece that I've cut up, but let's see. So you get, you can earn this with a $50 purchase or a $100 purchase and you get the paper 
and a stamp set. And let me see. Oh, the stamp set's right in front of me because we're going to use it too. You get the Wonderful World stamp set. And this is a distinctive stamp. And then you get this pack of paper. Okay, so you get... This is the front and the back of this piece. And the front and the back of this piece. And then you've got the front and back. These are the next two patterns. And then this is the piece we're using. So you get this and this is what's on the back. And then the last, oh, no, not the last, next to the last. This is the next piece, front and back. And then finally, you have this one, front and back. Okay, so that is a celebration item that will be available beginning July 1st with a $100 spend you can pick this as one of your choices. Okay, so we're going to be using this pattern. And from this pattern, I think I need those pieces, let me get those put away. I've already die cut with the mini pocket dies. I cut the mini pocket. Okay, so these are the mini pocket dies. They're a standalone item in the back of the 2022 to 23 annual catalog. And this is what I've done. Okay, so the total size of this for a piece of designer series paper that you would need to make this pocket is five inches by about four and an eighth. So, uh, yeah, if you cut it at four. No, nope, because you got to go down here. So you need to have it at least four and a quarter. Okay. So that we're going to make that. If I can figure out how this goes back on here. Just like that. And these are the extra pieces that you get. So you get a label and we're using this. And you get an extra leaf. And this is one of those... Um, Little things that you can put on your mini pocket to wrap some twine around to keep the pocket closed. And this will make a paper bow. And then this is a little oval that has a little bit of embossing that will look like a piercing on that oval. Okay, so we are using that. And then we've got another piece of that same designer series paper. And this piece is cut two by three and a quarter from Rich Razzleberry Scrap. I've cut one of the, the third largest scallop contour die. And then we need to do a little bit of stamping. And you'll need a scrap piece of soft sea foam. And from the soft sea foam, you're going to cut three of the little grass pieces from the die set. You'll need those. Okay, let's go ahead and get our stamping done. So you'll need a scrap piece of paper. And you are going to stamp Actually, I've stamped two elephants. I'm going to try it with this elephant today. So we're going to do our trunk elephant because I really like this one for this card. And we're going to stamp that down. And then we need a balloon from the stamp set. This also comes in the elephant parade. I'm just going to stamp that down. Okay. All right. I don't need a lot of stamping for this. Okay, again, 
I will color my elephant with the light and dark smoky slate uh, and the petal pink, just like I showed you the other elephant. And then with the balloon, we're going to color this in Melon Mambo. Get a piece of scratch paper. I'm gonna start with my Dark Melon Mambo. And I'm going to go along the right edge of the balloon and I'm gonna color in the bottom with the dark. And then I'm gonna go back with my light and I'm gonna go over my dark. And then I'm going to go in small circles and go around and finish coloring that balloon in. Okay, now the artist has given us where the light spot would be, okay? And I could have tried to avoid that, and I am lighter over on that edge, but again, I'm gonna take my color lifter. I can figure out what I did with it, because it didn't make it back. Oh, there it is, in my bucket. Okay, so then we're gonna take our color lifter, and I'm gonna go between that artist line and the edge, and I'm just gonna give it a little swipe around the corner, and I'm going to call that good. And then I'm going to take these and I'm going to die cut them with my mini machine. And for the sake of the video, I've already done that. So here's my little elephant colored with the light and dark smoky slate. And here is my balloon. And then with my rich Razzleberry ink, I stamped What a Happy Day and I cut it out with that uh, die from the mini pocket dies. All right, so let's move these out of the way and we need to fold our piece of three and one eighth inch by eight and a half. We're gonna fold this. And this is gonna make a little mini card. So we're gonna fold and burnish this. Okay. Then I'm gonna bring back in my scrap paper and from the Wonderful World stamp set, I'm going to use this small little leafy image. Just right here. And I'm gonna get pear pizzazz ink. I'm gonna move all that stuff out of the way. And I I'm going to randomly stamp all over the outside edge. I'm gonna turn my stamp so that it doesn't look uniform. And I'm just going to stamp along that edge, turning as I go, just to make my own little designer series paper. And really, this doesn't take that long, but the effect will be really cool. So I'm not worrying about the middle because I'm going to fill that. So that's always something to keep in mind when you're doing your random stamping, is how far in do you need to go? Okay, so we're gonna take this now got this and we're going to make sure that we've got enough stamped and we do okay so I'm going to set that aside for the moment because what you would want to do next is you would want to grab out your envelope and you would want to take your piece of scrap paper and cover this so that you can do your flap, okay? So I've just basically done the same thing on the flap, but I've already done that. If you were doing it, you would wanna do it at the same time. 
Okay, that would save you just a little bit of time, I think. All right, so let's go ahead and put this away. So we're done with that. And then we can start our assembly process. Okay. So I'm going to add my piece of rich razzleberry to my mini card here. And I'm just going to do that with some stamp and seal. Okay. I'm going to center that up as best I can. And then I'm going to add this piece. Well, actually. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and glue my elephant down so I can make sure I get this done the way I want it. Okay, now I've taken and cut three of the grass pieces in soft sea foam, but the color in my paper is actually pear pizzazz. So I'm going to grab my scrap paper and I'm going to take my pear pizzazz ink and a blending brush. And I didn't want the pear pizzazz um, cardstock seemed a little harsh to me. So I'm taking the soft sea foam and I'm gonna ink blend the pear pizzazz on the top. And I'm not gonna go dark because I want it to really match that um, designer series paper. Okay, so I've got those three pieces that are now ready for my project. Move that out of the way and then I'm going to take and I'm going to put my elephant down here. Okay. And I'm going to take and put my um, grass here, kind of like so. And then I'm going to put this one in the front. Okay. So now I know about where I need to stick my elephant. Now I'm going to take some Stampin' Dimensionals. For Miss Abby the elephant here. Because that's what I'm calling her. And I'm not putting anything at the bottom. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of regular glue on the bottom here. Okay, so just a little bit. And then I'm going to peel off my backings, figure out where I want that elephant to go again. I'm going to slide that into that grass. And, and then I'm going to stick that down. And then my elephant will have some dimension at the top and still be a little flat at the bottom, which is what I need. Then I'm going to take my grass and at the bottom of my grass, I'm going to start over here on the right or on the left, put my grass down. And this will just give the illusion that Miss Abby is walking through the grass. Okay. And then this is where I need my glue dots. And I'm going to grab my take your pick tool 
And I want to pop this up, but I don't want to pop it up too much. So when I want to pop something up a little bit, just give it a tiny bit of dimension, but I don't want a lot, I use my mini glue dots. And if I wanted a little bit more depth, I would double those up. But I'm fine with just what I've got here. So now I'm just going to put these pieces together here, like this along the bottom. And now... I've got the illusion that we're standing in grass. And then I'm going to take my balloon and I'm gonna stick this and what I should have done ahead of time, but I'm still gonna do is I'm actually going to trim off the white space on that trunk just at the end okay do you see what I did there and the reason that I'm doing that is because when I stick the balloon I want it to look like it's one cohesive unit and you can see that my balloon is going to stick off my paper a little bit here so for what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add this piece to my mini card front here and I'm going to stick that right in those stitches center that up okay now I can take my balloon and I can put a glue dot on the left half, not so much the right. I'm gonna put just the tiniest dab of glue at the end of my string. Okay. Remove my backing. And I'm gonna stick that end of that balloon right on that elephant so that it looks like she's holding. Stick my take your pick tool under there and press it for a second so that they stay together. And there we are. So now my mini card is done. And I can attach this to my layer of Rich Razzleberry. But before I do that, I'm going to fold my basic white thick card base in half. Get that all lined up. And it's going to be a stinker there. Why am I having such a hard time holding those even? I like to hold the edges even and then push my bone folder back so that those layers are even and I don't get, in case my paper was just a tiny bit longer, then I'll get an even front and back piece. Okay, so now I can take this and I can open this up and I'm going to put this on because I want to make sure that I'm doing it the correct orientation. Okay, and I'm going to add this to my card base and again I'm going to use liquid glue. down here okay and then I'm gonna finish pressing that on the inside give it a light pressure with my bone folder because I don't want to press out those in that embossing I've got that 
Okay, then I can go ahead and this is gonna go on the front like so. And I'm gonna use liquid glue for that in case it moves or in case I don't get it centered just right, then I can move it. And again, I got too much glue, so I'm gonna take my glue tip and I'm gonna move that so it doesn't squish because I don't want it to squish out. Okay. And I'm gonna put this down here, center it up. And once I'm happy with the placement, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and press down here. Okay. Now, let me go ahead and show you my original card because we're at the point where really, my original card would have stopped A, I wouldn't have this open piece, okay? So my original card is just a single five and a half, uh, four and a quarter by five and a half piece of thick basic white. And then this is the card, okay? But I did this and I thought, okay, that's great. And if you're gonna do it this way, especially with the embossing, you wanna make sure you put an extra layer in here because otherwise your writing's gonna be really bumpy from the 3D embossing folder. So you could do this and it's beautiful, right? But then I got the brainstorm and thought, well, what if you wanted to give a gift card or you wanted to give some money, a check, then you could take the mini pocket folder and cut that out in the matching designer series paper. We're gonna fold this over, it, sc it scores everything for you. So all we have to do is burnish these scores and then we're going to put a little adhesive on the sides here. Now, you can use liquid glue but I happen to have some 1 8 inch tape, like tear and tape, and that's what I'm gonna use. Just because I want to do it quickly for the video, and I'm gonna put my tape right up here next to the edge. You could use the regular size tear and tape, um, and then just fold the excess over but I have this on hand already, so I'm going to use it. Okay, so we're just gonna put that down. We'll grab our Take Your Pick tool, which is right beside me. Take off that tape. And then I'm just going to set this all down, make sure everything's nice and even, and then give it a good press, and I've got my little pocket. Now I can add my pocket to the inside of my mini card here. It's all going to match. It'll hold a gift card. It'll hold some money and it's going to fit in our little card beautifully. Just center that up, give it a press, and now I can stick a gift card or some cash in there. And for the inside of the, uh, for the little decoration here, I'm just going to put what a happy day. I'm gonna just put that down with Stampin' Seal. And now I've got this wonderful little gift card holder and a greeting card that will stand up. With this one, you can't stand it up. 
But with this one, I can stand it up, have the little pocket in there, and then I can decorate up my inside. So now let's grab a piece of inside paper, the four and, and I'm going to go a little bit crazy on this because this card isn't going to get mailed, so I'm not really worried about the weight of it. So I'm going to take this, and from the Biggest Wish stamp set, I've already put the Happy Birthday on a block. Okay. And let me show you how I did that, just in case you're wondering. So what I did was I took a piece of my grid paper, put my happy on there, put my birthday, lined that up how I wanted it, got that as straight as I could using my grid lines, and then took my block, and put it down so that I have both stamps together and I don't have to stamp it twice and worry about lining it up. And I'm gonna take my Rich Razzleberry ink. And I'm gonna stamp my happy birthday. In the middle of my card here. Right. I'm gonna take that pear pizzazz ink. And the little leaf. And I'm gonna stamp that down. And stamp it up here. And then I'm gonna give it one more right there. Now, I have a card that's good for, in this case, my little girl. And it, But it doesn't look too young. And it will help her feel like she's grown up. She's got a cute card. But she won't feel like a baby when she gets it. I'm going to go ahead and put this to the inside. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. One more thing. i got to grab the Rich Raspberry paper. And I'm going to take a piece of four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to mount my inside piece. what I just do with it? Oh my goodness. Where did I put that piece of paper? Oh, it's stuck. Look at that. To the back of my trimmer. And I'm just going to center this up. And then I'm going to add this to the inside of my card. That will give it a little extra pizzazz. And the final thing I'm going to do to this, I'm going to put some Wink of Stella so my balloon's all nice and shiny. All right, oh, and while we're at it, we might as well give her a little dazzle on her cheek. All right, so now we've got our envelope and we've got our card with our mini pocket envelope inside. And that will make anyone a lovely little birthday card. All right, well, those are my projects for you tonight. I hope you enjoyed those. 
I'm going to bring those back out. Oh, thanks, Jennifer. I'm glad you like that. So here's our projects that we did tonight. I guess I can go ahead and move these more into the center there for you. So this is the single layer with the mini open card. This is the full size card with the mini on top and a mini envelope. And then you've got just a note card here. All right. Oh, thanks for the hearts and I'm glad you guys enjoyed those tonight. So happy. Okay, so what we will do is we will see you back here next Tuesday, July 5th. Assuming that I, I've got kind of a busy weekend, so hopefully I can get it all together and I can see you back here next Tuesday. If not, I'll let you know. We've got some family things going on this week, so we'll see how everything pans out. All right, everybody. Have a good night, and we'll talk with you soon. Thanks for coming. Good night.